Thank you very much, Martin. Good morning, everybody. Uh, let me just make a few points to start with, and I apologize if they're slightly in random order, but it's not easy to find time to make it more structured. Um, first of all, um, I think you're, you're aware from various um, briefings already, we'll be launching a flash appeal this afternoon at 4 o'clock. Um, uh, I'll be doing that. Uh, we were hoping to have President Clinton there as well, but he, he's not in fact available. He's on a plane at the time. <coughs> the flash appeal will, will be for around $560 million, which I think is slightly higher than the figure you, you had already. Uh, the full breakdown of what that appeal represents will be available this afternoon, but um, let me just say, give you a rough sort of idea, almost half of that, as is usual in these situations, will be for food, emergency food aid, and then there will be amounts of between 20 and 50 million dollars for health, water and sanitation, nutrition, emergency shelter, um, uh, early recovery uh, and agriculture, the, the latter two of course being linked there very much at the recovery end of it. And there, there will be some other elements too, for example emergency education, but those will be the, um, uh, the main areas that, that we'll be asking for money for. Uh, the basis of the appeal will be that some three million people uh, are believed to have been badly affected by the earthquake and we'll be looking for um, relief to, to keep them going for six months. Uh, that's of course in the first place. Um, as I think I said yesterday, this is very much a, a first rough effort at this. Uh, we know that it doesn't represent um, very good detailed information from the ground but we'll be revising it in three or four weeks to reflect that and probably to include a bit more on the early recovery side when we've got a better, better idea, uh, for example, of how that should be done. Um, we still don't have any uh, reliable figures for, for dead or injured, although, of course, we recognize that those numbers are likely to be extremely high. Um, our best estimate at the moment from satellite, figure, uh, satellite pictures is that at least 30% of the buildings in Port-au-Prince uh, have been uh, affected by the earthquake. There are some areas of the city, for example, City Soleil, which are relatively less affected, either because of their geographical location or because of the, the nature of the structures there, less vulnerable to earthquakes. But of course, uh, the effect of the earthquake were extremely severe in some areas, and there are some areas where 50% or more of the buildings uh, have been damaged. Um, the scale of the international response so far is extremely encouraging. I think, as I said yesterday, um, we have counted so far about $360 million in pledges. Um, uh, now, some of that might be uh, going to the flash appeal, others will be going bilaterally in different ways or directly to NGOs and others, which is fine. Um, that figure is not all for emergency aid. For example, some of it will be for reconstruction and longer term efforts. Uh, for example, I think there's 100 million each from the World Bank and IMF, uh, which are likely to be more related to longer term reconstruction than emergency aid. But just gives you some idea of the of the response and of course there are many companies and individuals who are responding extremely generously uh, to, this, um, uh, to this relief effort. Uh, on the search and rescue side that effort is going on with all possible speed. Um, some um, people are still being recovered alive, relatively few as you would expect but that is still happening. Um, there are some 27 search and rescue teams um, uh, either there already, I think 17 are there and another 10 are on the way. Uh, and we're trying to get the message out now that we don't need any more search and rescue teams beyond those that are on the way uh, already. Um, obviously every humanitarian agency there is, both the UN agencies, NGOs, the Red Cross and Red Crescent movement are, are busting a gut, if I can put it that way, to get uh, people there in, in larger numbers, people to help and to get supplies in uh, as well as of course all the bilateral uh, efforts which are, which are going on from individual countries led, uh, of course, by the, the huge US effort. Um, planes from um, the World Food Program, UNICEF, the International Red Cross, the International Federation of the Red Cross, which is a, a separate thing, uh, have already landed, and Médecins Sans Frontières have already landed. Uh, others are on the way. Uh, and, of course, there are all the bilateral aid planes which have been landing too, and I, I won't go into all the details of those. I don't have a, a full list here, but the, um, many of those um, uh, I think you're aware of. Um, as you're also aware, there has been a, an issue, there is an issue about the capacity of the airport. It was a particular problem about congestion yesterday afternoon uh, when planes had to circle. But again, everybody's working desperately um, to resolve these problems. The airport was working through the night. Planes were landing uh, an increasing frequency. So the capacity, I think, 
of the airport to deal with flights is rising, and it's certainly handling more flights now than it was uh, before the earthquake, despite the damage to the uh, control tower. The port is still out of action, um, but we believe the road from the Dominican Republic is now open and usable and is indeed being used to some extent. Um, some other bits of information. Uh, you may have seen stories that the World Food Programme warehouses were looted in Port-au-Prince. They were not looted. In fact, that's not a, a correct story. Uh, we believe they are intact. There are some issues about access to them, not least because of some doubts about the structure uh, of them, uh, which is making people a little bit nervous about um, going inside, but they have not been looted, as, as we were assured by the World Food Programme this morning. Um, food, uh, there are these stocks of food on the ground. Food is arriving um, in, in increasing quantities. Uh, water is arriving and water purification uh, equipment to, uh, is arriving from UNICEF, from Oxfam, uh, from CARE and others, as well as from the UN agencies. Um, I was told this morning that 13 truckloads of bottled water are on their way from the D Dominican Republic, for example. That's obviously, again, not going to be enough, but uh, supplies are beginning to uh, uh, arrive. Distribution of these supplies has started yesterday, um, uh, particularly of ready-to-eat food, um, from stocks on the ground and, and from uh, stocks beginning to come in. Obviously, uh, as you'll be well aware, that was a, on a, a, a very small scale compared with the need. Uh, we hope that will be larger today. I'm sure it will be larger today. Um, um, and we are setting up uh, with the government 15 distribution points um, uh, around the, the city. Uh, and also um, trying to make sure we have safe storage areas um, to, to put the food uh, and to operate. Um, uh, clearly, the, the distribution is an issue um, uh, about how fast we can do that um, and whether it represents more than a drop in the ocean of, of what is needed. We're well aware of that. We understand and share the impatience and frustration that there is about this. Um, but you, again, there is a, a need to recognize, I think, that there are significant constraints on this, not only the, the, the difficulties of arrival of goods and unloading, but also the distribution, the lack of trucks, uh, lack of fuel, blocked roads, and so on. I'm not trying to make excuses. Um, I'm simply saying that there is a, a reality there that we need to deal with. It's uh, classic for any similar operation. Um, the, the, the inevitably, and despite everybody's enormous efforts, uh, it can take time to scale up. It will be scaling up on a, on a every day by multiples, I'm sure. Um, I acknowledge that, that you need to, to note that the, the, the anger and the frustration is there and that inevitably it's slow, but I just ask you to, to, to uh, acknowledge that reality too. Um, people are, say, are passing many sleepless nights um, to try and get this, um, this material there, this aid there to people who desperately need it. We recognize that. We have no doubt about that. Um, we're also setting up um, as well as the airport in Port-au-Prince, uh, separate hubs um, for the arrival of aid and the, the, the stockage of aid on way stations, if you like, in Santo Domingo and the Dominican Republic and in Panama City so that we can channel the aid uh, in the most rational way possible. Uh, a couple of other points. Um, bodies are being collected um, systematically now um, uh, by MINUSTA and by the uh, government insofar as they have capacity to do that. Uh, I think we had a figure of, I think it was 9,000 bodies so far have been collected um, yesterday. Um, so that gives you some idea of the, of the scale of that problem, but I hope that uh, much more progress will be made on that today. Uh, on the medical side, which you've also talked about before, um, some hospitals are still working despite all the difficulties, although, as we've said before, they're overwhelmed. Um, various field hospitals are already on the way, one or two are already there. And again, uh, the, we're taking the view that we don't need any more field hospitals beyond those that are already on the way, which are, are several. Um, but of course, there's still a, an urgent need for doctors and medical supplies uh, beyond the field hospitals. One final point, um, which I think we touched on yesterday, people are, are moving to some extent um, from the centre of Port-au-Prince um, to uh, areas outside, um, to relatives, no doubt, perhaps in other communities. And there are some reports of movements uh, of people uh, on a limited scale, I think, towards the Dominican Republic, particularly people seeking medical help uh, in the hospital near the border there. So we're keeping an eye on that um, to make sure we can track it and, and deal with people uh, who are crossing into the Dominican Republic. UNHCR uh, are very focused on that. 